In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build this. It's a Sonic Model Mini Skyhunter, and I've built this aircraft to be used for long range flying and aerial cinematography. It features a dual camera setup, with a HD camera mounted on a pan tilt system for recording footage whilst looking around, paired alongside an analog starlight camera for flying in those tricky or low light situations. Switching between the two cameras in flight is handled by a flight controller, which tucked away comfortably in the fuselage also provides functions such as flight stabilisation, power monitoring and OSD. Coupled with a GPS unit, the flight controller also permits autonomous functions such as waypoints, heading hold and most importantly for those moments, return to home. On the wings there's a 800mm video transmitter and a TBS crossfire receiver, which combined with a large battery should permit for flights covering many miles. This aircraft also has a airspeed sensor, which is somewhat unnecessary, but does provide more accurate speed information than the GPS unit, and more importantly than anything, it just looks kind of cool. To build this aircraft yourself, you're going to need all these parts. Now this is a bit of an expensive build, but you could possibly replace some of the parts with cheaper alternatives if you prefer. You're also going to need things such as glue, double sided tape and heat shrink, as well as access to a 3D printer, as many of these components are 3D printed. A link to the files for these prints is in the video description. So now I've shown you the aircraft and all the parts you'll need for this build, there's only one thing left to do, and that's show you how to put it all together. So let's get to it. So as you can see here, this build started with the flight controller. The first few things I did was to solder on the pin headers, bridge these two pads to enable a 9 volt power supply for the VTX, and solder on the XT60 lead to the main voltage input pads. I then took the ESC. I shortened the wires by about 75% before then soldering it up to the flight controller exactly as shown in this schematic, with the end result looking like this. To connect the ESC to the motor I then took three short lengths of 16 AWG wire and three female bullet connectors. Onto each wire I soldered a single connector and insulated it with a piece of heat shrink before then soldering each wire onto a motor output pad on the ESC. With the flight controller and ESC prepped, I then grabbed this custom 3D printed mount and into the designated compartments installed the flight controller and ESC using double sided tape. I then ran the XC6 lead down through this hole and under the mount where I secured at the end here with a cable tie. To then complete this first stage of the build, I took the motor and also this 3D printed motor mount and simply bolted the two together. In the second stage of the build, I then assembled the fuselage. I started off by taking the right half of the body and into it glued the flight controller and mountain mounts like this before then taking the time to connect the motor and ESC bullet connectors together. I then took the left half of the body and carefully glued that into place before then taking a sharp craft knife to cut away this small section of foam here to permit access to the motor bolts. With that done, I then took these metal inserts and hammered one into the hole in each of these wooden plates. These wooden plates were then glued into the fuselage like this with the metal inserts facing downwards and the holes lining up with these slots. The fuselage is then put to one side for several hours to let the glue dry properly. In this first stage I installed the GPS unit. I started off by shortening the stock wires a little, before then adding a crimp to the end of each. These crimped wires were then carefully installed into a 4 pin DuPont connector, in exactly the order you see on this schematic. Now it's very important these wires are arranged correctly, with ground followed by power, TX, then RX, as arranging them in any other order may damage the GPS unit. Once the connector was correctly added to the GPS wiring, it was then plugged into these pins on the flight controller. The GPS unit itself was then installed into this compartment on the flight controller mount using some double sided tape. The next thing to then be installed on the aircraft was the airspeed sensor. I started off by taking the hose, and from it cut two short lengths which would then sit onto the tubes at the rear of the pedo, and the other end of each would sit onto the tubes protruding from the sensor unit itself. I then grabbed a length of servo wire with a 3 pin mill connector on one end, and soldered it onto the sensor unit exactly as shown in this schematic, with the end result looking like this. To install the airspeed sensor into the aircraft, I then took this custom 3D printed housing and into it installed the pedo tube and secured the sensor unit on the end with double sided tape. The two halves of the housing were then glued together with some CA adhesive. In the right side of the fuselage, just behind the nose, I then cut a suitably sized hole 
and into it I glued the 3D printed housing. The wire from the sensor was then routed down through the fuselage to the fly controller, where it was plugged into these pins, with the end result looking like this. In this fifth stage I assembled the pan tilt system. The first thing I did was grab a MG90 servo, and onto its wires I added some braided sleeving. I then took this 3D printed canopy and into the designated slot at the front glued the servo, making sure the wires faced towards the rear. I then grabbed this 3D printed pan mount and into the slot in the bottom installed the MG90 servo horn. Then, after making sure the servo was centered, mounted the horn and subsequently the pan mount onto the servo in the canopy and secured it using a screw. With that done, I then grabbed this 3D printed tilt mount and into this hole inserted a 5mm M3 nylon screw. I then grabbed the second MG90 servo, which I again added braided sleeving to, and inserted it into the mount like this. The horn for the servo was then installed into this slot in the side of the pan mount. The two mounts were then carefully connected together, with the M3 screw protruding from the tilt mount being indexed in this hole in the pan mount, and the servo gear then being inserted into the horn and secured with a screw. To complete the pan tilt mechanism, all that was then left to do was to install the camera. The first thing I had to do was take a length of servo wire with a 3 pin mail connector on one end, and after adding some braided sleeving, soldered it to the PCB as seen in this schematic. After that, it was then a simple case of inserting the camera into the mount. The PCB was installed into the rear compartment with the CPU facing upwards and the wires exiting the back, and the camera was installed into the front here where it was secured with two screws. I then took the 3D printed lid and clipped it into place on top of the tilt mount like this, before then routing the three wires down through this hole in the canopy. The final step was to then take a magnet and glue it into this recess here, and I also glued another into the front of the fuselage. To complete the main body of the aircraft, the last thing that needed to be installed was the FPV camera. And straight out of the box, the wiring loom on this camera was too short, so the first thing I had to do was extend it by using a length of server wire with a 3-pin mail connector on one end. With that done, I then added some braided sleeving, before then taking this 3D printed camera mount and installing the camera into it using two screws. In the very front of the fuselage, I then cut a suitably sized hole, into which I then inserted the camera mount and secured it with a small dab of glue. Next, I then took this small 3D printed bracket, which I glued to the side of the battery compartment. I then routed the camera wire through it and down to the flight controller, where it was plugged into these pins. With all that done, the final step was then to take this 3D printed battery tray and simply glue it into the battery compartment. With the fuselage now complete, I put it to one side and began working on the wings. I grabbed the right wing and started off by installing the control horn on the aileron. I then grabbed a Emac servo and extended the length of the stock wire using a servo extension cable before then attaching a servo arm. The servo was then glued into this bay on the underside of the wing, and the wires were routed through this pre-cut channel. Next, I then grabbed one of these short carbon spars, and glued it into this channel near the wing tip. I then took two of these plastic inserts and glued them into these holes, before then connecting the servo arm to the control horn with a push rod. I then grabbed these two boom attachment pieces, and after clipping them together, secured them with two screws. I then glued the assembly into the wing like this, before then taking one of these foam covers and gluing that on top. With all that done, I then put the wing to one side for a moment and grabbed the other one, where I repeated all these steps to create a mirror copy. With the two wings complete, the next step was then to take the main carbon spar and insert it into the wings, before then gluing them both together. Finally, I then used a sharp craft knife to cut away this small section of foam here, before then taking this 3D printed wiring string, and after gluing it into place here, route the server wires up through it. With the wings assembled, the next thing to do was to install the VTX. I started off by grabbing a length of server wire with a 3 pin connector on one end, and soldered it to the VTX as seen in this schematic. I then grabbed a single length of wire, and after adding a crimp and a 1 pin DuPont connector to one end, soldered it to the TLM pad on the VTX like this. With that done, I then carefully twisted the wires together, before then grabbing this custom 3D printed mount and installing the VTX into it. I then grabbed the antenna 
And after making a small hole through the right wing into the hardware bay beneath, insert the antenna like this before then connecting it to the VTX. The VTX mount was then glued into the hardware bay, and after cutting a small channel here, the wires were routed down to the main wiring channel and fed up through the wiring restraint. The final component to install in the wings was then the receiver. The first step was to grab a single length of wire, and also a length of server wire, and from the ladder I removed the plugs from both ends. After then attaching crimps to one end of each of the four wires, I installed them into a 4-pin DuPont connector in the order seen on this schematic. The other end of each of those four wires was then soldered to the receiver in the exact order seen on this schematic, with the end result looking like this. After twisting the wires together, I then grabbed this custom 3D printed mount and installed the receiver into it like this, with the antenna going through this hole. I then made a hole in the left wing going through the hardware bay, into which I then inserted the other end of the antenna, before then gluing the RX mount into place like this. Again, I then cut a small channel here to allow the wires to be routed to the main wiring channel, where they then fed along to the wiring restraint in the centre. In this 10th stage of the build, I then assembled the tail. Starting off with the horizontal stabiliser, I grabbed this carbon spar and glued it into this slot here, before then grabbing these two carbon plates and gluing them to the sides. I then grabbed a Emacs servo, and after adding a arm, glued it into this pre-moulded bay, before then routing the wires through this channel and cutting off the plug. I then attached a horn to the elevator and connected it to the servo arm using a push rod, before then grabbing these boom attachment pieces and installing one onto either end of the horizontal stabiliser like this, using screws and glue. Next, I grabbed one of the vertical stabilisers, and cut out the pre-marked servo slot, and also a wiring channel, before then taking a centred servo with an arm attached, and gluing it into place like this. I then repeated the process on the other stabiliser, before then taking both, and installing them into the boom attachments on the horizontal stabiliser with screws and glue. It's important to mention that the arms on the two rudder servos are aligned to both point in the same direction to ensure the rudder surfaces correctly move together. In the underside of the horizontal stabiliser I then cut a channel, through which I then routed the wire from the right rudder servo to meet with the wire from the left rudder servo. After cutting off the plugs from the two servo wires, I then splice them together as seen in the schematic to create a single rudder servo wire. That wire was then routed through the inside of the left boom attachment, along with the elevator servo wire, and onto the end of each I then attach crimps and a female servo connector. To complete the tail, the last thing that's left to do was to then attach the horns to the rudders, and connect them to the servo arms using push rods. The final thing to then do before assembling the wings, tail and fuselage together, was to create the long wiring extensions for the elevator and rudder. To do this, I simply grabbed a handful of servo extension cables, and soldered them together like this to create two identical length pairs. Note that on the end of each of these wires, there is a 3-pin male servo connector. Both of these wires were then inserted into the boom attachment in the left wing, before then being routed through the wiring channel and up through the wiring restraint. With that done, I then took this fiberglass plate, and glued it into position on the underside of the wing. I then carefully bundled the control surface wires together in exactly this order, before then securing them together with some cable ties. So with the tail, wings and fuselage now prepared, completing the build was a simple case of bolting everything together and plugging the various wires into the flight controller. I started off by installing the pan tilt canopy. The three wires from the canopy were routed through the battery compartment and down to the flight controller, where they were then each plugged into these pins as seen in this schematic. The three wires were then secured together to the flight controller mount using a cable tie, before the canopy was then clipped into place on the front of the fuselage like this. Next I then grabbed one of the carbon fibre booms, and into it routed the elevator and rudder server extension wires, before then inserting the boom into the housing on the left wing. I then took the other carbon fibre boom and inserted that into the housing on the right wing, before then securing both in place using some 20mm M3 screws and some bolts. The end of each of the extension cables, which are now hanging at the end of the left boom, were then plugged into the corresponding elevator and rudder cables on the tail. Both booms were then inserted into the housings on the tail, with the wires being carefully tucked away inside, before then both being secured in place with more 20mm M3 screws and some bolts. <laughs> 
Now at this point, the wings were ready to be installed onto the fuselage. But before doing that, the flight controller needed to be programmed while I still had access to the USB port. So after grabbing my laptop, I connected the flight controller to it with a USB cable and then opened iNav Configurator, where I then firstly flashed the correct firmware. I then completed the six point calibration sequence, followed by then assigning the airplane general preset. I then went to the mixer tab where I set the platform configuration and mixer preset to airplane and then set up the server mixer exactly as you see here. On the outputs tab I then set these settings and reverse the servos before then going to the ports tab where I assigned these functions to each UART. I then went to the configuration tab where I enabled battery and current sensor monitoring and after setting the output scale to 250 enabled the barometer and also the pedo tube. I then set the receiver mode to serial and the provider's TBS crossfire before then scrolling down the page to enable GPS and all these other features. With that done I then went to the failsafe tab where I enabled return to home and then on the receiver tab I set the map to TAER and the RSI channel to channel 12. I then assigned these modes on the modes tab before then programming the OSD to look like this on the OSD tab. After then uploading a font, I went to the CLI tab, where I copied and pasted these codes before hitting enter, and then after typing save and pressing enter again, closed down iNav. I then quickly opened BHEL Heli Suite, where I calibrated the ESC and set these settings, before then closing it down and disconnecting the USB cable, ready to finish the build. With the flight controller programming complete, the wings could now be installed onto the fuselage. But before I could physically screw them into place, the various wires had to be correctly connected to the flight controller. The control surface wiring loom, with its four connectors tethered together, was the first thing I connected up, with the plugs being inserted onto these pins like this. The VTX wire was then plugged into these pins, with the single pin connector being plugged into this UART. And then finally the receiver wire, with its four pin connector, was plugged in here. Then, and only then, could the wings finally be lowered into position on top of the fuselage, where they were then screwed into place using these four screws. At this point, there's then just a few small things left to do. I had to add a strip of velcro to the battery compartment, I attach a prop to the motor, and then program my radio with all these settings. I then had to take some white electrical tape and use it to conceal any of the exposed wiring. And then finally, to complete the whole build, attach the stickers. So having shown you how I built this aircraft and how I did all the programming for the flight controller and the radio, it seems only right that I should conclude this video by proving that it does indeed actually fly. Now coming in at around 1.3 kilos fully loaded, this build is a little on the heavy side, but with full throttle and a good throw into a gentle breeze, she lifts into the air with no problem. Using a 4000 milliamp 3S LiPo battery tucked into the nose, the CG balances perfectly and gets you around 30 to 45 minutes of flight time, assuming you go easy on the throttle. So far, I've only managed to log a handful of flights of this aircraft, which is largely due to the weather, but on each occasion it's flown really, really well. Despite warnings from other Skyhunter pilots who often report issues with tail waggle on their aircraft, on my build I've noticed no issues so far, with the aircraft flying reasonably smooth and stable on every flight. Now I have to admit to being pleasantly surprised at how well the pan tilt mechanism works, as I did have concerns there'd be problems with vibration and jello, but thankfully all the footage recorded so far has been distortion free. Controlling the mechanism is achieved using these sliders on the side of the radio, which makes it easy to look around in flight whilst keeping both your hands on the sticks. Switching between the two cameras is controlled with this switch, and a novel feature of the F722 flight controller is you also have the option to remotely turn off the HD camera if you want which is a useful feature should you ever need to save power or want to prevent it from overheating whilst waiting for a satellite lock. My only complaint of this build so far is there appears to be a fault with the current sensor on the flight controller, which is causing some wacky current readings. But after contacting Maytech, they propose a solution which I'll try at some point in the near future. Other than that though, everything seems to be working well, but only after more extensive testing will I be able to give a better judgement.
So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll try and get back to you. As you can imagine, making this video has taken a lot of time and work. So if you want to leave me a thumbs up, that would be greatly appreciated. Until next time, see ya.